Hello, namaste. This is Tim Haller, and I'm an astrologer in Savannah, Georgia. This is a weekly astrological forecast. I put these videos on YouTube once a week. You can help support future videos from me by purchasing a birth chart, transit, or relationship chart reading from me at the link below. And I also offer spiritual guidance sessions for those with questions unrelated to astrology. Now we are into our final week of March. Today is Monday the 30th. And I need to get this video out in one take because it's only going to rain harder as time goes on, appropriately putting me under some pressure. This is a pressure cooker time. We are into eclipse season. So beginning Friday, March 20th, we had a solar eclipse in the final degree of Pisces. And this weekend, on Saturday, we are going to have a lunar eclipse at 14 degrees of Libra. And this is called the eclipse season, which is exciting and shocking, for better or worse. This is a time of spontaneous realization, sudden changes. So let's talk about this week. Yesterday, the moon went into Leo. Tonight, Mercury will move into Aries. Finally, Mercury is our final inner planet to move from Pisces into Aries, which means that hopefully some of this Piscinian chaos that's been going on in our mind as our mind got whipped around by the chaos of Pisces the last month, this will start to become more focused and more one way, one more, more direct. There is a lot of fire, intense energy going on this week. Tomorrow, Mars will move into Taurus and remain there for the next two months. And this is like the beginning of this week is a touchdown. We are landing this plane and we're kind of grounding this energy and the energy is becoming more grounded. Now, it's still going to remain an active and exciting time throughout this eclipse season, but hopefully throughout April, things will start to slow down. We'll be able to kind of put our head down and bust out the work that we need to get done and we'll be able to go at our own pace. So throughout April, things will hopefully start to slow down and kind of settle from all the excitement that's still going to be building throughout this week. So Friday, the moon moves into Libra, and then Saturday, 8.06 a.m. Eastern Time, we have this lunar eclipse, 14 degrees, 21 minutes of Libra. So the moon will be opposing the sun at the time of the eclipse with the north node in Libra. And these two polarities will be T-square to Pluto in Capricorn. Pluto is the transforming agent of ourselves and our solar system. And Pluto moves very slowly. Pluto is in the middle of Capricorn and will remain in Capricorn for many years to come. Pluto in Capricorn is transforming the establishment, the structure, the society, the cultural traditions. This is what is being challenged by this lunar eclipse that carries with it a theme of self and other. So let's talk about this eclipse. Let's talk about these three parts that are really causing tension with one another. And this is a creative tension. When we're talking about a T-square here, that means we're being pulled in two different directions, really three different directions. But this is a creative tension. We have to integrate these polarities that want to pull in opposite directions. We have to somehow integrate them together so they are working holistically together as one solid whole. And this is obviously a challenge. And it's a creative challenge, which means that we have to invent new solutions of how to do this. This is what keeps us evolving. This is what keeps us moving forward. So there really is a lot of potential with this, but it is also very challenging. And we're when we're dealing with eclipses, they are unexpected, shocking changes sometimes. And one thing we have to remember in the midst of all these changes is we are not being punished just because the world around us seems to be ending. And what this is, is Pluto in Capricorn. And I'm actually going to be talking more extensively about Pluto in Capricorn with my teacher, Kaipacha's community, the New Paradigm community. 
And by the way, I should randomly throw in that Kaipacha is not my father. I get that question all the time if I'm Kaipacha's son. No, I am a student of Kaipacha. He introduced me to the School of Evolutionary Astrology, founded by Jeff Wolf Green, of which I am a lifelong student. So we may share some similarities. We might be apparently from the same planet, but no, I'm not Tom's son. However, I will be talking on his community this next month about Pluto in Capricorn. And so what I recommend for us all is to be focused not on the fact that Pluto is changing the structure and the culture and traditions and government and politics and all these things that we want to change we can focus on what is new that is coming in. Why is the government changing? Why is the cultural tradition needing to change? Why are these structures crumbling? Because we need to get to the polarity point of Capricorn that is opposite to Capricorn, which is Cancer. This is the evolutionary intent of Pluto in Capricorn. The evolutionary intent of Pluto in any sign is to create a balance and a harmony through transforming that sign. In other words, evolving it, maturing it, making it at a better, higher octave that is more in service to love. So we can focus on all the horrible things that restrict us from getting love, or we can focus on ways in which we can better access love. And this is the challenge with this eclipse. Because on the one hand, we have all of this Aries energy going on with the Sun and Uranus. And this is this really powerful, revolutionary energy that also wants to kind of break rules and revolt and rebel against, square to Pluto, the tradition, the establishment, the structure. And so what we noticed this week is there is a lot of built-up emotional tension. There is a lot of passion. There is a lot of anger. There is a lot of frustration. Are any of these motions inappropriate or bad? No. They are necessary to shake people up enough to get them inspired enough, to get them passionate enough to start pushing forward and to stop just heeding the old system, the old rules and regulation, the old culture that people are sick of because it is restricting our natural, authentic, raw, naked expression. Many of us feel oppressed. Thus, we have feelings of anger, frustration, and passion. So these emotions are not a problem. However, they are extremely powerful and somewhat difficult to maintain in a healthy way. And that's the challenge of this eclipse. How do we harness this revolutionary, pioneering, way-paving energy that wants to invent, invent, pioneer, do things differently? And this is why I actually encourage us to break rules. If we feel that some traditional, cultural, national rule is imposing on our love and our freedom, might we experiment enough trusting our own inner connection to spirit as a human being enough to challenge these cultural, outer, external, authoritative forces? Because this is what this all is. This is essentially the understanding that the vast majority of us in some way or another has been conditioned by patriarchal understanding that is coming from male dominant external authoritative powers that have told us that it has to be a specific way or else we're breaking rules therefore we're bad therefore we're feeling guilty and shameful and all of these emotions can be coming up and encouraging us to make changes and push things forward but in order to do this and have it work we have to keep in mind the Pluto polarity point in Cancer as well as the fact that the moon's north node is in Libra, right? With the moon. This is a lunar eclipse. This is a time of illuminating this moon. This is the most powerful this moon gets, being not only opposed by the sun, being illuminated by the sun, but also the moon's south node. All of this karma, all of this past life stuff is being brought up and we have an opportunity to push it forward in a way that is evolving and liberating. 
And this involves a good look at our emotions. And we have to do it in a way that is healthy, that is considerate, and is not destructive to other people. And when we're dealing with so much powerful, revolutionary, pioneering, Aries energy that wants to revolt, that wants to break rules, we're also having realizations about my authentic individual self. Yeah? And this is really what the point of a birth chart reading is about, is find out who I am as an individual that is different from everybody. Why is it so important to know this information? Because once you know who you are as an individual, you know your sensitivities, you know your qualities, you know your greater story going way, way back, is you understand what works for you and what doesn't that does not have to necessarily correlate to some external structure, some external religion, government, whatever, that is telling you how to be. You don't need external forces to tell you how to be when you know who you are. And this is called the individuated stage. And we evolve from a consensus stage where we're constantly looking to the outside. What are you doing? Okay, I'm going to do what you do. What is the, you know, the consensus doing? I'm just going to suppress my individuality into the consensus. We evolve out of that stage into an individual stage where we realize, oh my goodness, I am unique. I have my own qualities that I should be sharing, not suppressing them because the consensus doesn't agree or doesn't focus on what I am authentically. Now that stage is very wonderful because this is when we start inventing, pioneering, discovering new ways. But then what must we do in order for this to successfully work? Yes, we can be very brilliant individuals with tremendous insight and tremendous unique perspective that other people don't have. We have wisdom, we have knowledge, we have experience that has trained us and matured us in particular ways that other people don't have. That means we have unique gifts, understandings to bring back to the consensus, to bring back to our relationships, to bring back to our family. Because what we actually want, even through all these brilliant realizations that we may have and all of this passion that wants to spring forward and do new things and break rules in a constructive way, we have to make sure that this is actually beneficial not only to us but for other people. This is how someone invents something that is actually going to remain as a useful invention or pioneer a way that is actually going to be beneficial to others. We have to come back to this earth. This is why last week we talked about integration. We can go out and discover so many brilliant things, but if we cannot come back to our body, to our mundane everyday life, to our nine to five job, to our wife and children, you know, our mundane immediate environment. If we can't make this stuff useful and integrated in our immediate environment and relationships, we might as well throw it out because it's actually going to keep us further from where we want to go than closer. Why is that? Well, the patriarchy that we are now actively changing has been focused on powerful individuals establishing themselves. Not a relationship issue, not a, cl a closeness to our family. It had to do with one person being great and establishing themselves. That was the role of the male in patriarchal society for thousands of years. The man would go out, get a job to establish themselves to provide security to the family. The male had no role with intimacy with the family, with the children, with the cooking, with the raising of the children. No role at all. So all of us, the majority of us, have been conditioned in some way or another to consciously or subconsciously accept these beliefs that we need to go out in order to find security. And it may not be as important, the family, the intimacy, the proximity between us and those that we love. This is not considered as important via our cultural conditioning. But if we are going to be moving towards the future, we have to understand this north node in Libra with the moon at the time of this eclipse, which means that we have to not only integrate ourselves with others and the other world and outer relationships, 
but we also need to emotionally integrate. We need to be able to express our emotions authentically in a way that is not hurting other people or suppressing other people or ignoring other people. Libra is about balance. Libra is what teaches us that listening is just as important as speaking. And if we cannot achieve a balance between listening and speaking, whatever we have to contribute to the world will not make it there. We will, might you know, feel all glorious and want all this attention on us and feel all excited about expressing. I mean, there's a lot of this natal energy going on. Next week, Jupiter is going to turn direct in Leo. It wants to express. This energy is very extroverted. Let's get our stuff out there. If we can't listen to how we are being received, broadcasting our individual expression out there, it's not going to make much of a difference. We have to integrate this with other people. We have to make this practical. And we have to tune into our emotions. Let's not get so carried away with the new things that are coming in, with the new inventions that are all happening on an outside level. Even these thoughts, these realizations, you know, these are kind of more outside than, say, our emotions. Our emotions are deeper. Our emotions are connected to our subconscious. And our subconscious contains so much more than our conscious mind, it's almost impossible to comprehend. So, our deeper story, our deeper history, our deeper individuality, we will learn through our emotions, not simply our left-brained mind. Mercury will be conjunct the moon's south node in Aries at the time of this eclipse. That means, if anything, our left brain is a rut that we must watch out of getting stuck into. Breaking apart, dissecting, labeling, judging, comparing, everything is what the left brain does. And this is not a problem. It does not even have to get in our way. It's not something we need to kill off or eliminate. However, it is so much more important in times like these that we tune into our emotions because this is how we have revealed to us the greater story. You know, this is how we know who our deeper self is, is through our emotions. Our mind can only remember from our time of birth. And if you think about it, it doesn't even remember everything. We can't remember exactly what we were doing two weeks ago at this hour. We, we have no idea. So our conscious mind is like the very tip of the iceberg. And beneath it is this inconceivably huge form that is who we are, that is us. So we need to get in touch with this deeper reality. And this is the same as needing emotional security. If we're going to explore our own emotions, if we're going to explore our own subconscious nature, we need to have an environment that is safe enough to do this. This is why I recommend focusing on Cancer rather than Pluto in Capricorn. If we're focusing on our job, if we're focusing on the government, you know, even if we're focusing on Monsanto and all these really kind of awful, devastating things that happen in our world. No, it's not wrong to acknowledge these things. No, it's not wrong to say, protest, and call attention to the fact that these things need to change. All that is wonderful, but that is not how we get emotional security. When you're out there protesting and the cops are freaking shooting rubber bullets and, you know, pepper spray at you, do you feel very emotionally secure? No. So we can establish a reality where we actually feel emotionally secure. But in order to do this, we have to create an environment where we feel safe. And that kind of means that we shouldn't focus too much on the darkness and the devastating outer world and the government and the wars and all those things. Yes, those things are happening. Yes, the world still needs a lot of cleaning up and a lot of fixing. However, how are we going to be able to do any of that while we still remain emotionally insecure? So we can't even authentically express our emotions that reveals who we are. We can't do it unless we create an environment that is safe, that is stable, that is comforting. 
So we need Cancer. We need Libra. We need all of these feminine signs that have been oppressed, that have to do with sensuality, our bodies. This is how we feel safe in our immediate environment. What we're talking about here is our relationships, Libra and Scorpio. Scorpio desires intimacy. That means that we should be able to feel safe to be able to express all of our feelings. Whether we feel a little guilty, a little weird, oh, I'm breaking rules, I don't know if I should express this to my significant other, I don't know if I should open up this Pandora's box of all these scary things. Guess how we heal ourselves in this world? We open up those Pandora's boxes. Not just for ourselves when we're hiding in our closet. We start to emotionally express what's going on in us with other people. This is how we heal ourselves. Because all of this guilt and this shame and this pressure coming from all these thousands of years of conditioning, it's very, very, very difficult to fix that stuff by yourself. This is not a time to go it alone. You're not going to get emotional security by locking yourself away in a room and discarding everybody else from your life. That's just a way to make yourself feel more insecure in this world. And then we get cut off, we get angry, we get frustrated, and then we start to lash out onto other people. And it's totally counterproductive. And we're going to see some of this this week because there are people that feel all of this intensity from being cut off from their own body, their own sensuality, etc. And they're frustrated and they're angry and they don't know what to do. So it starts to explode. It starts to lash out onto other people. And in many respects, this is a necessary push to start the chemical reactions, the revolutions that we need to take down this patriarchal society. However, we can do it in a much more gentle, optimistic, free-flowing, let's say nice way, where we don't have to throw ourselves out onto the battlefield anymore. Let's do it in a much more gentle, gentle, compassionate way, which means let's simply focus on what's going on, say, in our family life. How are the kids? How are your parents? Your immediate environment? How's the home? How's the yard? You're growing a garden? That's a nice way to feel emotionally secure in your environment. Getting in touch with Mother Nature. Something that once we lose connection with, when we go off to the city, when we go off to the cubicle job, we start to feel emotionally insecure because we feel like we're in an environment that's prison-like and confining and we can't openly express ourselves, Or else the boss will hear, somebody will hear, and we'll get in trouble. We'll be judged, etc. So, focus on our friend groups. Let's form connections with those that really matter to us. Those associations that are the most loving and inspiring associations in our life, that is the most important part of our life at this time. Those associations where we feel like we can be open and expressive and intimate with our deepest feelings, even the scary ones, those are our most important parts of our life. If we can establish more relationships like that, if we can extend this energy of immediate home environment and nurturance and it, you're safe here, you can open yourself up here, no matter who you are, no matter what religion you believe in, we are all one family. We don't judge anybody for their individual differences. We don't place expectations and obligations on people. We don't ask you what your certification is, how many years of school you went to, how much money you earn. This is a safe environment where you can express yourself whomever you are. What if we put our energy into that and we continue to extend that energy out, connecting with more people, creating more intimate, loving, heart-centered associations. Wouldn't that create a reality surrounding us that would increase our security? Therefore, we can do our expressions of our emotional stuff and therefore heal ourself of thousands of years of guilt, suppression, and getting beat up by external authoritative powers? Yes, that is the way that we do it because that's how you remove the authoritative external powers from dominating your life and from continuing to be our slave owner. We don't have to live that way anymore. 
just because there's still a government, just because there's still money, doesn't mean that we have to be enslaved by those things. Yeah? It's like how Christ said, give to Caesar what is Caesar's. What he's saying is, yeah, you still got to pay your taxes because if you don't, you will be put into prison, which will just mean more external authoritative powers. We don't want that. So pay your taxes. Give to Caesar what is Caesar's, a.k.a. don't worry about it. It's Caesar's money. It's his face on the coin. It has nothing to do with us, really. Taxes, the government, external forces that are going to be really pissing people off. Because, I mean, okay, this is tax season. All this Uranus, Aries, Sun, revolutionary energy. People are pissed off at the government because they're realizing how suppressed they are. And, you know, many of us may be in a good monetary situation. Some of us are not. In which case, this emotional security thing becomes even more challenging. Because now we have external forces that are saying to us, Oh no, you're in danger. Which makes it even more important to establish the immediate environment which will be telling us that's not exactly true. Give to Caesar what is Caesar's is another way of saying don't overly pay attention to Caesar. Those guys are in big trouble. <laughs> don't get too overly swept away by their wagging of the finger because it's not going to matter. What matters most importantly is us, our families, our immediate environment, and our associations. That is where we create safety. We create more safety from that immediate environment than we do from any amount of money, from any paycheck. It, that's all external stuff. So long as we are focused on the external stuff, we will have no security because that's not how you find security. People try to find security out there their entire lives. And it does not give them inner security because they're looking in the wrong place. So, let's use this challenging, creatively intense energy to create and realize some solutions to these problems that are going to be solutions that were not found on the level that these problems were created on. We don't need to make more money necessarily. We don't have to do more external jumping through hoops necessarily. Let's take this solution on a totally different platform, totally different level. Give to Caesar what is Caesar's. Make your life, your center, your emotions the important part of your life and therefore you will find out who you are. You will find out your greater story, your greater talents, your greater strengths. And then in knowing who you are, you can contribute your real talents and authentic strengths back to the world and be guaranteed success because you know it's going to work for you because you were made to do that work. This is how this stuff works. And of course, we can take a look into your birth chart and do exactly this. This is the purpose of astrology. Let's find out who you are. Let's submerge into your depth. Let's submerge into your greater story. Find out what your individual talents and strengths are. That way you can offer those things back to the world, back to our immediate environment, back to our relationships in such a way to benefit people without having to worry whether this is the right thing or not and not have to worry about external authoritative powers okaying our own naked, natural way of being things. We don't have to worry about whether we're doing the right job and we're going to be guaranteed success if we're doing something that we were made to do and it feels good to us and it comes natural to us. Then we don't have to worry about external security. Then we can make internal security our real focus. And this is how we are transforming the entire world. Because moving through this guilt, this guilt is connected to a collective guilt. Moving through these challenges, these shames, blah, blah, blah. This is how we are healing collective guilt, collective shame. So I encourage us to use the revolutionary energy of Uranus and experiment, break rules, be a little pushy, be a little taboo against the old external forces, but simultaneously do it in a way that is still compassionate towards our loved ones, towards our relationship, where we're not too much suppressing other people, we are listening just as much as we are speaking. That way we can create a new platform of security that exists on the person-to-person, -person, emotional, intimate level. And then we can feel like we actually have ground to stand on and we won't be so much swept away 
by the chaos and the spontaneous, exciting, shocking transformation that is now rippling throughout the collective consciousness. So, exciting time, that was a lot. Let's get on with it. I'm wishing so much the best for you and your beloveds, and namaste.